All right, y'all, today I am grabbing a $5,000 motorcycle and I'm gonna try to ride it like 1,100 miles across the country. Forever, I've wanted an old vintage bike and the pan heads and the knuckleheads have gotten so expensive. On a road trip across the country, I stopped at a Harley Davidson dealership to get a little work done and I found a mechanic that had a 1977 shovel head for sale and I bought it for $5,000. Yesterday, I left Eureka Springs, Arkansas, about 14 hours away, met up with my homeboy, Mike. Hey and we drove this car up here to Sandusky, Ohio, where we are going to pick up our bikes and ride them together home. I say our bikes, because Mike, what'd you buy? Uh, 1970 Chevrolet FL8. Is this the oldest motorcycle you've ever owned? Yes. Do you think we're gonna make it trouble free? Yes. I like the man's confidence. Absolutely not. And look, and <laughs> look who showed up to meet us. It's some considerate Canadians. Oh my goodness. Happened to be crossing the country. No faith. No faith. And you got your snakeskins on for the occasion. Well, I mean, I figured we're going old school. I might as well do it. So let's take a look at it. There it is. Oh, yes. Look at that. This is my new bike. So I did the spoke front wheel. I did the Springer front end. Oh, man. I did the sissy bar. I did a step up seat. Not bad for five grand, huh? Dude, it's a, it's a wicked looking bike. It Can is. I sit on it? Yeah, sit on it. <laughs> I don't even want to look at that. No. These are my upgrades. Five grand was for the bike. That did not include the new Springer front end. Do you mind if I grab some photos? No, I don't mind at all. Yeah, this is perfect, man. The boots make it, Adam. Do they make it? Yeah. I brought them just for this occasion. Yeah. yeah, those bars are super cool. Yeah, we'll just roll them forward here for me. Y'all, this is the man I bought the motorcycle from. This is Opie here at Mad River Harley David one. Mike's dying to see his bike. He hasn't got to see it yet. Can we show it to him? Yeah, I think it's here somewhere. All right, let's take a look. <laughs> These are exciting moments, man. There's nothing like getting a new, especially a new old bike. Look at this thing. Yes! <laughs> yes is right. Yes! How awesome. The old Togo seat. That bike is you, Mike. We are about to adventure on a road trip. Look how thin rad. those bags are. Little. Yeah. So thin. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. That does sound yeah. good. Yep. All right, here we go. 1,100 miles. <laughs> Look at. Leaving the dealership, the ride was completely different than anything I've ever done before. It felt what I always thought a motorcycle would feel like as a kid. You could feel every bump, you could feel the bike working, the vibrating, the lack of power and, and performance is a real thing and was substantially different from my latest road trip. But we quickly pushed out of town, rode through some riding hills, and we could not wipe the smiles off our faces. This was maybe one of the coolest things I've ever done on a motorcycle anywhere. And we had days of this adventure ahead of us. This is uh, truly a completely unique experience from riding any of the other bikes I've ridden. And frankly, I'm really liking it. And I mean really liking it. All in all, I'm absolutely loving this bike. All right, Mike, what do you think? <laughs> Be honest. It's awesome, dude. Yeah. What do you think about your bike? I think it's all right, huh? Yeah? A little loose in spots, but we can deal with that. All right, man. Yeah, yeah. It's been a good cruise. Yeah. It's, it's actually, it's going better than I might, might have anticipated. That's going to have to be tightened up. Yeah. Get a little loose there. A couple of good looking bikes if I do say so myself. Completely different experience than running my bagger with a fairing and a windshield. Getting out there in the wind and just 
the bike's vibrating it's, so much it's and it's yeah, the my, wind and the gravel's hitting me and keep my feet on the floorboard. Can't even, speaking of that, it does. And mine's <laughs> super bad because look how smooth these are. <laughs> yeah. So I gotta find something with some more grip to it because uh my boots, well they're not exactly riding boots. So yep. all in all, super cool. Super cool. Here we are. This is officially the junction of Route 62. Now, if y'all don't know, Route 62 is the only highway in America that connects Mexico to Canada running east to west. Starts in Mexico and El Paso border, ends at Niagara Falls, New York. Pretty rad. It winds and twists all the way across America. It's like a little over 2,300 miles long and it was built in the 1930s. So here it is, we're officially getting on it right here in Utica, Ohio. It was about a hundred mile run to hit Route 62. And now I figure about a thousand miles on Route 62, maybe a little more, but right around a thousand miles, I think is what we're gonna do. The bike itself is running well at this point. I don't wanna jinx it, but I will say that uh, there will be no interstate riding. It, it will be Route 62 the entire way into Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And if y'all wanna meet us, we hope to be at my place, the Route 62 Motor Resort by hopefully either Saturday night or Sunday. Well, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna stay all the way through? Yeah, after the holiday, I'm gonna go back to Missouri and go back to work. But you're gonna stay at the resort until then? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Here we go. Now that we're on Highway 62, Route 62 across the country, this is where the trip really starts for us. We wanted to put down some major miles on this road and immediately running through some cornfields, down some backcountry roads with some big, beautiful homes on both sides of us. We rode like this for quite a few miles before rolling in to Columbus, Ohio, and this Route 62 took us directly downtown. We're riding Route 62 through the skyscrapers, the buildings, the beautiful churches, and the sun setting, and all you can do is hear these bikes echo through these city streets. In this moment, after the sun has set, it became obvious how incredibly dim and outdated our headlights were. This is nothing like riding a motorcycle that I'm used to. This thing is clean out of the past, and in this moment, it shows. We are in a very bad part of town, and my bike's starting to miss. I don't know what's wrong with it, but it, it ain't good. It ain't good at all. bikes running like trash. I don't know what happened. It just started breaking down. We got off Route 62 somehow and we ended up right in the hood. I mean, in the hood. It, it was not good. <laughs> and uh, my bike wasn't running good. So I was a little nervous, but we were able to top off a little fuel, get outside of that part of town, make our way back to Route 62. Yeah, I'm leaking oil pretty bad down there. I'll have to see what it's from. So this hotel was sold out. We did find a Best Western about five miles away. We're gonna try to make it over there. <laughs> then get a look at this thing in the morning, I don't know. I mean, the bike is hot. I don't know. We'll get a look at it. All that oil I'm leaking ain't, ain't a good thing. <laughs> All right, y'all, welcome to the morning. We are outside the Best Western here we found in, what is it, Grove City? Yeah, Grove City. Yeah. And uh, the oil underneath my bike, there's still a little bit down there, but it's not as bad as it was last night. And you found some stuff on yours as well. Yeah, this uh, handlebar. You see all that red stuff right down there? <laughs> what is that? Riser bushings. His riser bushings are coming apart. <laughs> Those are original 1970 riser bushings, I'm guessing. <laughs> this is a way to shake out a machine, a road trip across country. I recently did it on a 1978 Trans Am, and it's about the same thing I spent most of my time fixing. Nonetheless, I got hit up by 100 people online last night after posting this little reel. Absolutely loving the bike. It's a beautiful ride. It got about 200 miles in today. 
but I'm leaking some oil and I don't know if it's relevant. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it is giving me trouble under power. So I am in Columbus, Ohio. Who knows somebody tomorrow that understands shovel heads who can help me look at this thing because it's like almost misfiring under power, but it seems to be idling pretty decent. If you're in Columbus or know somebody in Columbus, tag them in this, send them my way. I need some help. So thank you so much to everybody who shared that reel, shared that message. Let everybody know that I was out here needing help. I've had quite a few people reach out to me. I've got a list of stuff I can start looking at and start diagnosing this myself to see if I need bigger help. So we're gonna start with the spark plugs. We're gonna see if we can identify a fuel filter that could be plugged. And then from there, we'll know if we're running rich or lean or if we've got a fuel supply issue. Because to me, it really did feel like it was running out of fuel. In fact, we even stopped at a gas station because I thought I was running out of fuel. So let's dig into that. So the first advice we were given was to look for a fuel filter, but we can't seem to find a fuel filter anywhere in line. The next thing we were told to do is to pull the spark plugs and check them to see if we're running rich or lean. It's pretty rich there. I wonder what the front one looks like. It don't look like it's been fired. And see, it should be clean. The tip should be cleaned off if it was fired. Chip, it is definitely running rich. So that could be a wire issue too. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. And the second one is about the same, yeah. maybe a little better. I just sent a picture over to my guy. So my boy Doc from the Legacy Vets Motorcycle Club reached out to me first thing this morning. And this man has helped me so many times on the road when I've been broke down. He just makes phone calls and people come to my rescue. Got a guy named Headshot, who's about two hours away, said he could be in a truck and be here. I said, why don't you give me some things to check first? These are what he told me to do. So we could have some trash in the carburetor, potentially, or maybe there's a screen in the tank plugged up. Uh, but I think he said start with changing these plugs because they look pretty rough. Okay, we're back from the parts store, but uh, it's obvious my rear cylinder is not firing at all. Moment of truth, fire this girl up, see if she runs any better. Again, a huge shout out to all of you out there who answered my Instagram and Facebook stories with help. Uh, if it wasn't for you, uh, I don't know. I'm definitely thankful for all your help. Let's get this thing back on the road. Route 62 Classic Diner. Diners like that every day anymore. Tractor supply. He snapped this bolt that holds us here. He put that rubber in there because look at his movement. That's no movement in the tire, your bars move that much. That may not seem like a big deal, but when you're trying to drive at slow speeds and your bars are doing that much before you even start to move the wheel, very tricky. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. We're gonna have to find some bushings for them along the way somewhere. All right, so we're just putting that rubber in there and try to create the gap in between there. It's a, a makeshift bushing because there are no, no bushings in there. Boy, can you not even, you can't tighten that up anymore either. Uh, huh? No, it's tight. Because it's the bushing. The down. bolt tightens up all the way over yep. on the bushing. On the... This is uh, kind of half the fun of these old bikes. That is no uh, Sandoval Kraus T bar set you, uh, you got <laughs> no. there. I think it's going to work. Yes, that was a shameless plug to my new handlebar line, uh, Sandoval Kraus. It's for uh, later and new model Harley Davidsons. <laughs> Not proper, but. Hey, it'll get us down the road, man. That's why these trips take so long. We're about uh, three hours into the day. We've done, I think, about 56 miles. How's it working? Working good. Working good. 
after fixing the bikes, we were able to get on the road and enjoy some miles, quickly leaving town, rolling into farm fields and some beautiful, twisty, windy roads through the state of Ohio. Many people, if you've never ridden Ohio, may think Ohio has no great roads, but I'm telling you, these roads were really nice and enjoyable. The pavement was in great condition. Not much later, we started riding down the Ohio River Scenic Byway. This is a road that actually runs right along the Ohio River. We crossed up over this epic bridge and down into this very unique Riverside town. This is exactly the type of thing I like to see when I'm on the road trip. The different communities, the different cultures, and the different unique towns you find along the highway in America. Maysville, Kentucky. This is the first town we've hit inside Kentucky. And it's a pretty rad little river town. It is uh, cool to ride these old back highways like Route 62 and find all these little towns that are nestled along it. From here, I noticed the roads are just getting better and better. They're twistier, they're windier, the elevation changes are quicker, and the canopy of trees are just coming over the top of us as we're riding through these absolutely amazing towns. These old barns are built right alongside the roads, and the views are getting better by the minute. Kentucky is not disappointing here in the beginning of the trip. I enjoyed the cooler weather. Small town after small town. I just noticed Mike's not behind me. Man, that was a beautiful stretch of road. I'm gonna head back, see if I can find him. What happened? I don't know. I, I've been dragging the corners and out there from one of the corners. They must be just too low, but something caught me. I just did be a crash. Well, it's starting to run a little better, huh? What you got there? Oh, man. What is that, like a coating? Yeah, somebody's coated the inside of it and it's rusted on the inside you of the coating. Feel the rust on there. Yeah, look at the rust all in there. Mm -hmm. Woo, you don't have an inline filter? No. We might stop get when and put it in. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Before we have carb problems. Dang it, man. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> the bike's still pretty low. Y'all, it is 6.05. We started our day at about 8, 8.30. Fixed the bike out on the road about 11. Been riding pretty much, well, with the exception of a couple stops to fix bikes, we've been riding all day long. I think we've gone like 180 miles all day long, but we're banging at about, you know, 45 to 50 miles an hour. So a 200 mile day is actually like a five or six hour day. Mike is down again. This time it's a battery issue. I had to push him on the last stop. So we're here at O'Reilly's hoping he'll find a battery. The battery test good? The battery test good. Says it needs a charge. Says it needs a charge. That's not a good sign. Yeah, That's not yeah. a good sign. You got a charging system problem. I have a charging system problem. Oh, really? Dang it. Why is it running when it starts? Will, will it run? Because it takes very little juice to run. And I've been running without the headlight. I mean, your entire infotainment day. system and GPS system and all that's running? It, yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a 1970 <laughs> FLH. Yes, my infotainment <laughs> system is running. <laughs> so the plan is what, Mike? Well, uh, the battery tests good, so the charging system must not be working. So we've bought a battery charger. Uh, we are going to charge it here for a little while to get the bike started. Hopefully it will last to the motel tonight and we will take it out and take it in the motel room and charge it all night long. And that should get us through the day. Hopefully, hopefully get us through the day. 
Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Neither of us have any clue how this thing charges or how it works or where we could even find the parts should you try to replace whatever could be bad with the charging system. <laughs> So what happens if you buy old motorcycles sight unseen? I used to think they'd run the bikes to sound. Now I know they're doing it just to keep it running. Officially at uh, our Best Western for the night. We did uh, about 200 miles today and rode all day long. This is what happens when you're repairing bikes on the side of the road. And um, I think our top speed for today was probably 71. And I think that was all of three minutes. I think we did about average 45 miles an hour the whole way here. And I'm not complaining. It has been absolutely beautiful. But I'll tell you more about my opinion on that in tomorrow's video. This is where we end video one of riding uh, a 47 and a 54 year old motorcycle across country down old Route 62. We'll see you tomorrow.